Your golem is strange. Was strange, rather. You drove it away. You know that. I've never seen a golem run that fast. I just wanted to ask it a few questions. Yeah, I know. You guys are full of them. Oh, yes. What's it like to be a golem? Does it dream? Does it have a family? That was the last straw, you know. After that question about turtles in the desert, you asked it about its mother. So? It doesn't have a mother, it's a golem. You crossed its circuits. I don't know how you did it, but you weirded out my golem. So you are the mother, or the father? What? Well, I, I guess I... Oh, no, you're not getting in my head. You just stand there and help me monitor the gate. Am I the mother? Blazing braces, this is what I get for working with the tree children. Silvari awaken in the grove, and consider it their home. The pale tree stands at its heart, also known as the mother tree. She gives love and wise guidance to her sprouts. All right, we're back. Welcome back to the grove. We're here on Cara Flower. I've changed our appearance a little bit, um, and we're at day now as well. It's actually, uh, the, the sun is about to set again, so enjoy this while you can, guys. It's day, but look, this is what the pale tree looks like during the day. A giant flower, really, more than a tree. Absolutely gorgeous. Uh, yeah, I've heard that the pronunciation of my name here is uh, maybe a little bit off. I don't know, because I picked the name, so doesn't that mean that uh, mine should stand? Question mark, maybe? In any case, yeah, we've changed the way we look a little bit. Uh, we've got different hair, we've got a different face. I quite like her face. I'm going with, like, a lot of the newer things that are in the game. There's a lot of really cool hair, so I might change them later. We might trim this or something, I don't know. When we get a back piece, maybe we'll cut the hair a bit, I don't know. Um, but for now, yeah, we can look like this and uh, progress on. I really do like the red and green blend. And, uh, yeah, let's uh, move on with our story. Of course, there would be a ton to uh, explore. This uh, home capital is a lot like the Asuran one in Ratasum, where there's a lot of verticality at play. So, like, right now, underneath us, there are loads of other Silvari and floors, and then you go lower and lower and lower until you hit the waterline. Above us, there's Silvari and stuff going on. In fact, up there in the very uh, heart of the tree, the boughs of the tree, that is where uh, we can really communicate with the tree itself. The avatar of the pale tree is up there, and um, a few prominent Silvari uh, with her. You can see, in fact, there's a warden up here. Remember, the, one, the wardens are the defenders of the tree. Uh, but for us, our first job actually is to speak to Kaith because we did get a mail. So uh, let's just start wandering down a little bit. This was one of the areas depicted right at the start of Guild Wars 2 in that first original trailer. And I absolutely adored what I saw here uh, with the uh, long ramps and the railings as I interpreted them back then. Knowing you could jump and fall down if you weren't careful. Uh, we get nectar plants here as speed bonuses. I don't know if I've shown this off yet, but in the cities there are various NPCs you can speak to that give you buffs for the survival. They're just nectar plants. So this plant's bulbs are filled with a glowing sweet smelling nectar when we drink the nectar The nectar is delicious and delivers a surprising urge to drop everything and go for a run And so you see that we actually uh, get to move a little bit quicker here I think I did show that off in Divinity's Reach, actually. Maybe they're not all nectar here in the grove, but lots of them clearly are as you can see There's another one here uh, next to this dude called Banak who says, I've been traveling throughout Tyria, gathering tales to share. I could regale you with one or three if you'd like. Which topic would you prefer? Bravery, foolishness, or freedom? Let's go bravery. There were once two Asura traveling together from Ratasum. As they walked, they spotted a crew of inquests coming toward them. One of the travelers ran into the bushes to hide. And the other one? The other traveler remained and waited for the inquest to approach. They spoke to him, but seeing no threat, passed him by. When they were gone, the hider returned. And he asked his friend what the inquest had said. The brave traveler told his companion, They advised me to never trust anyone who deserts you when you need them the most. Ooh, when we get some other stories, maybe we'll deal with those later. I suppose the fact that it's nearly night time doesn't really matter as we descend into the roots of the tarnished coast here uh, because we're not going to be seeing too much sunshine sunshine anyway but yeah uh we're going down because kate sent us a mail this is kind of the main area for trade for the silvari this is where the bank and the trading posts are this is where you'll tend to see lots of players um, and indeed, I really do mean that. There'll be lots of players standing around here. Uh, as I said before, it feels like the Silvari area is always very well populated to me. 
Um, but let's read the mail. So, uh, Kate says, remembering your dream. She says, Valiant, you may remember me. Oh, believe me, Kate, we know who you are. We met briefly within the dream. While I could not be present for your actual awakening, the images I witnessed in your dream continue to occupy my thoughts. The dragon, yes, but other revelations as well. Come and speak with me in the grove. I have heard rumors that I believe you should know. Whispers of a green knight resembling the one in your dream. The leader of your cycle has offered to interpret your dream and offer wisdom. I sense that you all need this guidance. Travel swiftly. Okay, so of the original Savari that were born, there was only a, f a handful that came out 25 years ago. Kaith was one of them. But four of that original handful, they became like the leaders of their cycles. And so with the cycle of noon, we're going to meet the leader of our cycle. will give us a little bit of advice. Uh, this is one of the few places in Guild Wars 2 where that extra biography choice we make at character creation really means something. Because it's going to change a bit of dialogue and who we meet here and who we actually speak to. Uh, and voice dialogue at that as well. If you think about like who our original inventor friend was for the Asura, it has like no impact at all. It just changes who's in the home instance. But here for Silvara, it's a little bit different. Who are you? Geharan. Uh, we've seen a flurry of activity in the Order of Whispers tents. What do you think they're doing in there? Oh, this is where the Order of Whispers hang out? Oh, it is. Look, this is the Order's, the, the uh, Whispers icon. Uh, if you were a member of the Order, you could find out. I'm not suited to them. I can't keep a secret. They eat away at me. Eventually, I have to tell somebody. The Order seems to operate more openly here than anywhere else. Is that true? I've been outside the grove, but now that you mention it, I never saw any Order presence anywhere else. So you must be right. Yeah, that's true. There was no Order presence in Divinity's Reach, for example. We didn't see... I mean, when we joined the Order, we do know that they are around, but not openly. I guess the Silvari are new and naive enough that they're quite footloose with this information, and they're just sort of like, yeah, the Whispers are here, and they treat them like any of the others. It's kind of cool. I wonder how much of an asset Silvari would be as members of the Order of Whispers. I feel like of all the Orders, the Silvari are least prepared for what the Order of Whispers are all, around, uh, all about. I feel like the, the race has to exist for a while to really understand the importance of subterfuge and, um, you know, spying and whatnot. In any case, you saw that there was a Priory camp there as well. Continuing to descend. I mean, just look at how gorgeous and huge this city is. It's really deceptive, the Grove. It, it's one of the quicker ones to get map completion on because you can do, like, really fast, efficient routes through it. But in general, it's got so many cool hidden places and uh, exceptional small bits of detail in it that uh, I, I really feel like lacks from some of the other races, uh, capitals. But yeah, so all the way down here, on the floor with the uh, lovely blue tinged light coming around. There's vistas around, all kinds of things we can climb up to deal with. Uh, you'll notice that there are these elevators. So this is an elevator to the marshalling field. If we go into this, this is a seed pod that will float us up to the other floor. So you can take these shortcuts. But uh, going the scenic route, at least for once, is nice. You must have been terrified. How did you get away? We run faster than this. Oh, I know what they're talking about. We missed just the end of their story. Uh, a small Savari here called Cow. I hear you got your call to the Wild Hunt. Congratulations. What's your quest? Well, I only know that there's a dragon at the end of it, we say. Your story will be epic then. I assume your destiny is linked with Kate, so she wouldn't have shown such an interest in you. You'll make the Pale Tree pat proud, I'm sure. So again, is this dragon Zaitan? Is this dragon more specifically the thing we saw in the dream? Is this dragon... Uh, so, uh, a conclusion to our wild hunt that we haven't even seen represented in the game's expansions yet. Who knows, right? Um, I'm not ready to talk about it yet, we can say here. So, yeah, let's uh, head on in. There is a, This is our home. And I believe there's a warden we can speak to near the entrance. Maybe it's actually on the inside. This is a door that will open up. Let's move on in to Mockery of Death. And there's Kate. All right, so uh, this is uh, where the Silvari come to roost. This is uh, like the Salma district or our inventor's quarters as an Asura and um, or the Canton as the uh, Char. And uh, it's pretty empty right now because I think the story instance has removed all of my pickups and unlocks from the account, which is actually kind of nice. This gives you a fresh experience of what a nice clean home instance would be. And there is a lot of different places you can go. You can warp, wrap your way all the way up these roads and move around without being able to get the collections and whatnot. There's very little reason for me to come up here. But uh, I'll show you guys just the amount of depth and exploration that is possible. I really want to do that because we can't go everywhere in the series. So I want to show at least just how much there is in the grave to see. Here's a captain with a with thorn going straight through my house. Dude, what's going on? I'm ready to Nothing go. to see here. I'll have the path cleared very soon. Nothing to see? There's a huge vine blocking the middle of the garden. Uh, right. About that. Not sure where it came from, but I'll clear it out. The garden will be back to normal in no time. You know, it's just occurred to me... We were kind of... The Silvari story skips over a weird thing in that 
we were just born. So how do we know this is like our home? I guess it's more a home in terms of game mechanics here rather than... Like, it's not like we've been here before and this thorn wasn't here. It's like we've just arrived. Maybe that knowledge we pulled from the dream gave us understanding of this home, though, as though it was ours, even though we've technically never been here. Anyway, good luck, Warden. Clear that out for me, man. Uh, so, Keith, what's going on? And Keith, you can see, is speaking to Nyan here. I knew we'd meet again, young Valiant. You know that because you saw it in the dream. What else do we dream that comes true? Much. But not always what you might expect. Why? Is something troubling you? Somewhat. In my dream, a champion in brilliant green armor defeated all challengers. He seemed invincible, yet a small mouse nipped at his heel. Nyam, you are born of noon, like this Valiant. Can you interpret the vision? I see both literal and symbolic images here. I'll try. Perhaps this is a challenge that you must face to gain wisdom. Did... Help! Somebody help me! That brute is killing my beloved! Stop him! What? Where? Show me! The trouble's this way, Valiant. Oh, so the action kicks off immediately. Nyam is just going to stay here. First, we need to see what the commotion's about. Then we can talk. Okay, I'll go see what the problem is. This brute could be the foe you seek. All right, I'm coming, Keith. I'm coming. So here we are. Here about a Silvari that said, my beloved. It's kind of a weird thought. They're plants, right? And they've only just been born. Do they know love? Well, I guess we're about to find out. So, yeah, we can now move past the thorns, which miraculously have disappeared. Oh, sneaky, sneaky. I see what you did there, Arena Net. And what do we have here? Well, please, enough. Victory is yours. Just let him live. Live? <laughs> this sapling accepted my challenge and failed. His life is forfeit. Please, Dagdar, go and leave me. He'll kill you too if you stay. You're a monster, Versalak. I won't let you do this. I won't live without my beloved. So be it. As Ventari teaches, hard ground makes stronger roots. Oh my god. So, our objective to intervene and challenge the Green Knights. I love this area, by the way. These are target dummies for us. Uh, as the Silvari. Look how creepy this thing looks. It actually looks like a, a variety of enemy we will encounter in one of the expansions upcoming. That's so cool. He's got the little arrows in there. But everyone's scared, all these citizens. This person's been culled down as well. Nobody's mourning for her. Jesus Christ. Kate says, um, I see your dream was a warning. There stands a knight in green. I can't let that green bully harm anyone else. He must be stopped, we say. Indeed, but now what? Confront him? That's exactly what I plan to do. Okay. Uh, and this woman's been knocked down. So, uh, yeah, Dagdar. Uh, he says that green knight is horrible. He's going to kill uh, Elidus. Please, can you help me? Wait, who are you two? My name is Dagdar, and Elidus is my beloved. I can't let that monstrous green knight hurt him anymore. Don't worry, I'll help you. Why is the Green Knight so angry? Berslak is a bully. He challenges young Silvari just to be cruel, and now he's gone too far. I beg you, don't let him kill my love. Uh, I'll take over from here, Sapling. So, uh, first of all, we're so brave. I really like this, because we're very new as well. But, um... What you'll uh, notice here is this seems really cartoony and strange. Like, oh, he's just attacking people and bullying them. Don't worry. We will realize there's a pretty good reason for him doing this, for just sowing and spreading misery. Uh, and so, yeah, let's jump on in. He looks very cool as well, doesn't he? You might notice uh, I mentioned Arthurian stuff before. Uh, this idea, the green knight, and that little comment about a mouse nibbling at his heel, I believe... That that's actually supposed to be like referencing uh, there's a middle English romance essentially about a guy called Sir Gawain and the Green Knight and I think that this whole story is uh, kind of alluding to that just a little bit I'm at your come on you bully a knight in full armor attacking defenseless innocents that isn't right why don't you fight me instead I'd love to I've killed many in my quest to find the exceptional individual who can defeat me. <laughs> I doubt you're it, but we'll fight anyway. He says that, yeah, he attacks newborns, sure. And that full armor, by the way, we can wear eventually. Uh, maybe not as a necromancer, as light armor. Uh, but yeah, okay, so we can do lots of damage. We did get uh, a skill three as well here, by the way. This is the last axe ability. It's called Unholy Feast. This was uh, the name of a skill in Guild Wars 1. Uh, and it cripples foes, and then also if they have any boons, he doesn't. It will convert them into conditions. Also, it double casts if the enemy is nearly dead. So here I'll cast this. It sends a big wave out. 
We cripple him, and then that allows us to run away really easy. Look at how he can't keep to us now. So we can turn around, and we can continue using our X stuff. So we should be pretty fine. You'll also notice now that we've started the story, and we're getting a little bit better as a necromancer, we have got a new thing appearing on our user interface. There's a green bar that's charging, and especially if I use like this skill here, Ghostly Claws, Ghastly Claws, it charges quicker. That is our life force meter, and it is a special necromancer mechanic. So, uh, you did it, we'll talk about that very soon. Way we win. I guess we don't need that to take him out, though. <gasps> Ow, he actually knocked me into the bush here. He's back. What is this? So, Burslak returns. There is an Okot branch on the ground here I can pick up, by the way. This is a branch literally in our hands here that we can use to smack him. So, shall we leap onto him with it? Boom. Oh, that was awesome. Where did he go? He fell all the way over there. Right. So, yeah, it looks like it's going to take a little bit more to kill him. Jesus, he got back up. Let's see what we can do with our life force now. You can see it's fully grown. Well, if I press F1, you will see we become this scary ass undead looking shade. And our skill bar has completely changed. Super cool. As Bursalak attacks us now... Instead of losing health, we instead lose the life force. So this is like a second health bar for us, a totally second form. It, it's not like turning into, uh, like climbing into a battle suit as an Asura or whatever, necessarily. It's, it's an another form that we can dip into very, very frequently. Of course, if we get hit too much in it, we come back to the real world. And now we have to build our life force again by using abilities and by killing things. So we get life force as stuff dies around us. Uh, but it's like a super cool form that you can use defensively and offensively. Down he goes again. Bad feeling about this. <laughs> yeah, I have a bad feeling too, Keith. Well, what do you know? He's back up. Okay, great. So let's use some of our life force abilities. Our uh, Sorry, so this is called Death Shroud. Um, and so let's use some of our abilities. First, you get an auto attack, which plucks these cool like projectiles out that just does lots of damage. The skill 2 teleports us to our target, chills and bleeds them. The skill 3... Fears them away. This one here. This is Doom. Is he down for good? Come on. He's got to be down for good. No, he comes back up again. Oh, and he stunned us this time. Oh, and he's rooted us. A valiant. <laughs> good try. But you're no match for me, Weed. You did well enough that I'll leave you alive. For now. But I'll be back. The next time we fight, try to make it a real challenge. Or I'll make sure to finish what I started here today. Wow, and he's off, so we can't deal with him. We, we, I mean, we defended them, but we didn't take him out. My deepest thanks. Eladis is everything to me. Your courage saved us both. Who was that knight in the green armor? I saw him in my dream before I awoke. I recognized him as easily as if we'd met before. Bursalak. He's terrible. He challenges young Silvari to duels and then fights them to the death. When Bursalak insulted my honor, Eladis had no other option. He loves me, after all. That sounds like a cat taking advantage of mice. He's prideful and he's a bully. He deserves to be taught a lesson full of bruises. That's it. The meaning of your dream. Like mice, young Silvari fight Bursalak with no hope of winning. But you are different, Valiant. You can do more than just throw yourself on his claws. Perhaps I can help you after all. Bursalak is wooing a Valiant named Garwin. Unsuccessfully, I might add. She's been seen near Morgan's Spiral. That is helpful, Dagdar. Thank you. I'll visit Garwin and ask for her story. Perhaps Bursalak told her a weakness I can use. Alright, seems good to me. <clears throat> we'll go through more Death Shroud abilities uh, as we have more fights coming up. Uh, and yeah, so we gotta find a way to crack the armor. We do get a reward. Cloth gloves, linen gloves, or velvet gloves. I'm going with the velvet, just because that sounds so goddamn comfortable. Uh, and let's equip those. Those will be our first gloves. And, uh, yeah, seems pretty good. Hey, Dagdar. I can't thank you enough, he says. My love is injured, but safe. We owe you our lives. Uh, what started the fight? We were having a picnic when Bursalak arrived. He said terrible things, things Aladdis couldn't ignore, even though I begged my love to walk away. I, I, they've said my love about a hundred thousand times this instance. I guess it makes sense. This is like young love for them, so they're going to be obsessed and compelled to go on and on and on and on and on about it over and over again. Uh, did the Green Knight challenge Aladdis? Yes, and my beloved accepted. I was so frightened. He's not as skilled as you, and Bursalak cut him down. 
All right, so we can say, why were you fighting that monster unarmed? He would have killed you. That green knight was ferocious, so you both were right. Or oh, I'm glad I could help. We were going to be digni have dignity, so there you go. Uh, we are, but I thank the pale tree that you were nearby. Your courage saved us. Stay away from Burslack. Spread the word about him. I'll look into this. Uh, Never leave a wrong to ripen. Eladis himself says, thank you. He was so cruel to Dagdar. I knew I couldn't beat him, but I couldn't ignore it any longer. Why did you accept if you knew you couldn't win? If I hadn't, Burslack would have attacked us both. It was the only way to protect my beloved. So, um, yeah, this is uh, a big thing with the Savari. Very, very honorable, right? Uh, let's come over to Kaith. What do you make of all this? The world is for She says, uh, three times you defeated him, and three times he stood once more. This is treachery of the worst sort. So, I mean, we've we've been through many adventures and stories in Tyria. The idea of people, someone just becoming straight up invulnerable is quite a curiosity. I mean, someone straight up invulnerable could do what? All kinds of things. They could just go challenge the Elder Dragons on their own. It's kind of nuts. How did the Green Knight keep getting up, Kaith? I would guess it was some foul magic, likely of the Nightmare Courts. The Nightmare Court? Well, can you tell me more about them? And she says, they're the evil that cast the blight into your dream. You overcame it there, and you can do so again. So, uh, yeah, if he's one of the Nightmare Court, the idea of running around spreading misery amongst Silvari is a great idea for him, because the Nightmare Court are out there to sow discord and to send miserable, negative, horrible feelings back into the dream to increase the odds that Silvari, who are still unborn, will be influenced by it and come out and that darkness will spread. Okay, so... Um, that makes sense. If this is a part of my wild hunt, Kate, how will I know when it's complete? She says, your wild hunt is to defeat the dragon. That's what we saw in your dream. This is merely a step along the path. So here they kind of suggest that our wild hunts are combined. Uh, I say, I see. I'm gaining the wisdom I'll need by facing other enemies first. Uh, and Kate says, well, the elder dragons are powerful. No one expects you to face one when you're so new to the world. Be patient. Enjoy life. That time will come soon enough. So instead, we'll deal with some uh, low-level thugs uh, amongst the Nightmare Court from the at the Pale Tree's behest. Uh, what's the story of Dagdar and Aladdis? They're a young couple and very much in love. Yeah, what's this? Silvari can love in love? Love is a gift, she says, and a burden. We Silvari love freely as our hearts command. There is no shame in it. May I ask another question? Did you know this Gerwin they mentioned? So, hold on. Burslak is is looking for love himself. He's trying to woo this Gerwin person. The name is vaguely familiar. I believe she's recently suffered some tragedy, but I don't remember much more. Okay. Uh, and lastly, tell me this. How were you able to re-enter the dream to help me? Now, remember, this was the thing that we, we slightly missed because the dynamic event had just triggered. But basically, Kate, when we first see her in the dream, looked ephemeral. And then when we're actually fighting the dragon, she, she becomes corporeal. She actually physically comes to the gym. There's even a line in the dialogue which we missed where she says, I have joined you here to help you. So how were you able to do that, Kate? And Kate says this, that the mother tree sent me. Her power is great and she exists both here and in the dream. Still, as I'm awake, I could only do so much. So that, that concept, Silvari can re-enter the dream. Please remember that because that's going to be wholly abandoned by the game. Until way, 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 way down the line where it's suddenly going to be extremely important and the game will expect you to remember that, okay? So the Silvari can re-enter the dream. So you needed me to help you? Exactly! We hope you'd find someone with the heart of a hero. And here we were, Cara Flower. <laughs> Our name feels so weird. Alright, I'm glad that I could aid the Pearl Tree. Thanks very much. And, um, yeah, so Niam here. Uh, can talk a little bit about our cycle. Remember, we are the cycle of noon. And uh, this is uh, kind of the, the watcher of our cycle. She says, you have done very well. You fought hard and refused to surrender. I'm impressed. So what's it like to be firstborn, like you and Kate, the one of the original Silvari? She says, we are visionaries. I awakened at the zenith of the first day of our race. I'm a warrior and a defender. I founded the Wardens. So we say, I've seen wardens in the grove. Can you tell me more about them? They are honorable friends, protecting the grove from any who would harm the Silvari or the Pale Tree. So you know how we have um, the Adamant Guard defending the Black Citadel. You know how the Seraph defend Divinity's Reach and, you know, beyond as well, to be honest. The Lion Guard associated with Lion's Arch. You can think of the wardens as kind of the grove, uh, the Silvari's version of that. It, it is fascinating. They are honorable friends, protecting the grove from any who would harm the Silvari or the Pale Tree. If you remember back to Guild Wars 1, we did find Wardens that looked very Silvari-like, very Entish, very corrupted-looking Silvari. Uh, and they were defending the Echo Vowed Forest, which had recently, be, re recently been utterly destroyed and devastated by the activities of humans. So these Wardens we never properly got to communicate with very much in the original game. 
but they were defending a forest. And here we see Silvari also calling themselves wardens, defending their forest. They're just on more favorable terms because the whole place hasn't been freaking petrified. Uh, can you tell me more about the cycle of noon? Talk to me about this. She says, well, we awaken during the heat of the day. We are adventurers. We're daredevils and soldiers. You are of our cycle, Valiant. Okay, um, I'm very happy to be a member of this cycle. Uh, she says, dreams change with the hours. Sometimes a cycle can show us their true uh, strengths. Very interesting. It seems the dialogue was a little bit broken there. And uh, what about the other cycles? Well, she says there's noon, night, and dusk. They each have their own strengths and interests. So yeah, if we'd picked a different one, we wouldn't be speaking to Yam here. We'd be speaking to like Malamedes, or we'd be speaking to Kahedins and so on. Uh, what makes the time of our birth so significant? Uh, well, there's the dreams change uh, dialogue again. So there you have it. Thank you very much, Firstborn. Um, I enjoy that information very much. And with all of that, I think we're finally ready to get on out and find this Gerwin and uh, revisit, re-explore the world. So let's leave our home instance here and move back on up. How about we take one of the elevators to return this time, shall we? That should be pretty good. So the elevator to the marshalling field. I don't know whether the cutscene will... Eh, hey, it will play. There you go. I wasn't sure if it would just throw us straight into a loading screen or we would actually get the cutscene. I really like this. I wish that the other races and areas of the world had more of this going on. I think it's fantastic. You can skip this if, if you're kind of a speedy MMO player that wants to move, 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 move all the time. But this is brilliant. Um, you know, like the elevators in the Black Citadel... Uh, well, I don't know. I guess the Asura would have a lot of opportunity for, st for stuff like this as well. But you managed to get that. And look, we go from the very bottom all the way back up to just below the Omphalos chamber. And uh, ready to move back on out throughout the world. So there are Asura here. You can find several. They do have an Asura gate established. This has been going on for too long. You're exhausted. I just need to harden myself to them. I can't let them get to me. No, that's exactly what the Nightmare Court wants. They want you to stop feeling. Interesting. Do they want her to stop feeling? I'm not sure. I think they want her feeling bad. To stop feeling altogether. I don't know whether these nightmares come from the Nightmare Court or not. Oh, man. They could be a symptom of darkness in my heart. You can't think that way. You are good and gentle. It's a trap. Don't lose yourself. I'm not even sure who I am anymore. Oh man, that's actually really grim suddenly, Jesus. It seems like they're getting it their way. But yeah, so over to the Asura. There is one here, this gate engineer. Uh, some of you guys in the comments said that he had lots of cool dialogue, but I guess maybe it's just ambient dialogue that triggers uh, and we can't get on demand by pressing F to him. So, uh, fine. All right, let's move on out um, back up to Caledon Forest, and I will see you guys in a second. Alright, so Caledon Forest is a pretty expansive map. It kind of runs parallel to how Metrica Province runs. So Metrica Province goes all the way up like this. The Caledon Forest goes all the way up like this as well. Bordering between the coast though this time and the Dominion of Winds. Uh, there's some amazing sights and places to uh, experience here. So we'll have to be quite careful about where we travel to. The story wants us to go just over here on the right. So I think we'll make a beeline for that right away. Here look, the trainees attacking these guys. Oh, they're so well animated as well. I guess we can't actually attack them. Those guys training. Perhaps they're also of the cycle of noon. Uh, looking to become wardens. Of course, this is where lots of the fruits are. And many Silvari are born. I guess, interestingly enough, lots of Silvari could be born in other areas around the tree. Like, we were born here. But maybe... Maybe Silvari are born here and here and all the way around, you know? Maybe maybe even much closer down to the city. Be kind of curious to think. I doubt that they'd all just fall on the north side, right? Obviously, Astorea is one such village, but I would guess in the lore at least. In game, we only get to go to that one, but in lore at least, there, there must be others, no? Um, and yeah, there's just lots of different Silvari around here just because we're moving away from the tree, which I think you can still get some good sights of. Maybe if we look back the right way, we might be a bit obstructed here. Uh, just because we're moving further away from the tree, it doesn't mean that the Silvari are all just going to disappear very quickly. A lot of them do seem to stay quite close to home, but... Um, they spread out just as any of the other races will too. Uh, and we do have to be a bit careful. If you remember from uh, the previous parts of the series, some Silvari were scared that there were undead around. 
And indeed there will be. So we have to be kind of cautious. There seems to be a corpse here. Look, there's an Asura with us. Yeah, and um, there are undead that are rising from these shallow pools. Game mechanics-wise, they're going to be quite low level. So we don't have to worry too much. Uh, but I guess also game mechanics-wise, they are still Risen. So they still use a lot of those dangerous abilities that we've seen the Risen had. Exploding on us, doing big knockdowns, things like that. Uh, let's grab this waypoint. And uh, I think we've managed to skirt around them fairly comfortably. We even got a level for that. And uh, what do we what do we get as our reward? Oh, we unlock our first utility skill. There's still a lot to show off for Necro, though, so we'll keep it going slow. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, look over here as well. You also get some of the uh, other cool parts of the Tarnished Coast in that there's lots of floating rocks and things and just magic infused in the area. This was like this in Guild Wars 1 as well. And certainly on the Asura side of the Tarnished Coast, we saw how that had been manipulated and used a lot. Uh, but here we go. So let's see where Gerwin is. And I believe, if I remember rightly... Oh, no, they are over I thought they were going to be up that tower over there. I guess not. My beloved Evard. You deserve better than this. But at least here, you will be hidden from the villain that killed you. May your memory spread among the dream, and may your noble spirit return through the awakening of others. I will defend your grave with my life if I must. If I should fall, at least I will see you once more. Jesus, this seems pretty grim. So that was the uh, Silvari grave we're seeing there. Excuse me. Are you Gerwin? I need to speak with you about a Silvari named Bursalak. Bursalak? He is a beast. He killed my beloved Evart. If you are his friend, then you are an enemy to me. Just the opposite. Bursalak is attacking young Silvari in the grove, and I plan to stop him before anyone else gets hurt. Oh, that's very different. You see, my love was killed in a duel with Bursalak, and now I guard Evart's grave. I wish only to mourn, but Bursalak plagues me with his lovesick mewling. I buried Evart here to get away from Bursalak, but even in Morgan Spiral, I can find no peace. The Risen are everywhere, those horrible undead creatures. Even now, they're massing to swarm over this hill. Bursalak is killing innocents. I must find a way to defeat him, to overcome whatever trickery has made him powerful. If you help me find a way, I'll help you guard Evart's grave. You would? Oh, thank you. Yes, I'll gladly tell you everything I know. You see, Bursalak's armor... Wait, do you hear that? Oh no, the Risen are coming. Quickly, prepare to fight! The Risen are massing at Morgan Spiral. We should use these seeds to fortify our location before they arrive. I find this bit of the story kind of crazy. It's like we basically just said, yeah, I'm going to leave you here to die unless you give me the information I seek. I love the look of the grave, by the way. It reminds me of the PlayStation A Bug's Life game, which I freaking adored. Uh, so, yeah, it's kind of, you know, we're not very heroic or noble there, are we? I'm sure that if she said, well, no... We still should have stayed to help her out, right? But look at this. Immediately, we're dealing with Risen straight away. Uh, so let's see what we got. Now, this is a bit of a tower defense situation. Well, then. She says, I have seed plants. Plant them and they'll defend us. When these are gone, I'll make more. Uh, so what are seed plants, we say? She says, wonderful protectors. They grow right up away and help us fight the Risen. And we say, how do they work? And she says, mortar plants fire damaging thorns. Trap plants slow down or poison the enemy. That does sound useful. How can I use them again? So we can choose a trap seed or a mortar. I'm going to pick a mortar here. And we get three types. A red mortar, which fires a spiky ball. Uh, a blue mortar fires a frozen ball. Or a yellow mortar, which fires a healing seed at friendly targets. So I'm going to go with a lot of red ones, I think. I think that they'll do more damage. Undead to the east. Oh my god. We didn't get much time there. I think it's because I spent so long talking. There's also, by the way, these. Uh, a perfect soil for a healing plant, like a martyr's vine. Should we plant one? You plant one here, Gawain. I'll move on to the next. So she can plant healing things there too. There, those plague carries are really dangerous. We have to be cautious of those because they'll explode on us. So we're just going to basically do a bit of uh, defending here and hopefully build our fortification between the waves of Risen as they come on in. This guy's obstructed again. What's going on here? Thankfully, as a necromancer, if you use Unholy Feast, you can attack people through walls and things. Uh, also, as our utility skill, as a Silvari, we can just always, even outside of this instance, forever, get our racial abilities. And we get two. Grasping Vines, 
or seed turret. And we can just plant a seed turret. Even like way down the line, uh, uh, Claw Island and beyond in the story, we'll always be able to just plant a seed turret as a Silvari. Kind of nice. Here's another wave coming in. You'll see because tons of Risen have died here, we're already full on life force. Um, and also we've been building it with our axe attack. So let's go back on in. So we've seen life blast. We've seen dark path, the teleport. I'll show you that a little bit better. We'll teleport to that Risen all the way over there. Watch. Oh, we got obstructed again. Uh, we've seen doom. Here's life transfer. So we damage people around us constantly. Look at that. And we recharge our shroud while we're in it. Uh, so that's great. And then lastly, we have Tainted Shackles. This was a new skill that wasn't here at launch. I'll show you that on the next wave, I guess. Gawain, a chance to grow more plants? What about this? Plant one here. And here. Keep the undead busy while I prepare more yeah, I'm trying to. Uh, what else we got? Uh, this one over here. This looks like a great pl pl place for a mortar seed plant, don't you think? How about a thornberry? Well, I want to, but... Is she already occupied? I guess there's another wave coming. Let's plant our own one again here now. Look at look how much damage. This is actually pretty good. I like you probably only need like one blue plant to chill them all, and then all the red ones can do damage after that. So back into our shroud as they all keep dying. We got tainted shackles. What this does. The seeds are ready. Remember, the enemy could come from either side. Stay right, never mind. They're dying too fast to show off any freaking skills. Um can we speak to her? Well, oh, I think that's the idea. Okay, give, give me a trap seed. So we got a yellow one, or we got a purple one. So a cloud of AoE cripple, or pulsing damage. Let's do the pulsing damage. Let's drop that over there. And let's grow one of these. And if she can give me another one. There, to the wet. Give me a moment. I need to prepare more seeds. Okay, all right. Oh, I see. That's why she's not growing, because she needs to prepare more. Well, the reason they're going to charge us from quite far away here, we can run in early and attack them. The thing is, they'll probably swarm me down. This is genuinely dangerous over there. So we will wait till we get a little bit closer to the front lines. And then we get, you know, they'll split their aggro Destroy. onto everything else. All right, Tainted Shackles. Here we go. You connect a line to loads of targets around you. And all of these targets that you connect to... They can't stealth themselves anymore, and you stack Torment on them, which is a condition we haven't seen yet, uh, but Necros are very good at. And it's like Bleed, but it does more damage as people walk around. Then, after the Shackles end, they root everyone and immobilize them in place, uh, which is really good for comboing with maybe your other abilities. You can drop a Tainted Shackle, then leave Shroud, and then use that Immob to blow them up with other regular abilities, like your Axe abilities or whatever. So there you go. This is Life Force. You're going to see me going... You might think, oh god, WP's talked so much about this this episode. But you're going to see me going into that constantly on Necro. Because we don't get attunements. We instead get to dip into that. Okay? Uh, and here you can see already how Necro is a lot tankier, say, than Ellie. Just inherently because it has that. Uh, in theory. I mean, Ellie can stack evades and do all kinds of other things. But at a base core level, that's kind of what you're looking at. So there you go. That's Death Shroud. And with, when we get to traits, you'll see all manner of other crazy things that can happen with that. Believe me. Uh, so let's move back. I'm really scared of these exploded guys. So let's pull away. We, of course, do have an offhand we can equip as well, which I guess we'll do next instance. Keep blowing these up. And I am genuinely... I like this instance because you get a lot of targets. It's not like when we're dealing with centaurs where there's, like, one wave we deal with. There's a huge amount. Or even more seeds. Uh, you'll notice another cool synergy here with Unholy Feast. Remember I said that it double casts if it hits someone almost dead? So if you cast... And it hits five targets. So if you do it on a group of nearly dead things, it won't just double cast. It will, like, triple cast, quadra cast, and it will get everyone in... And when you cast it that many times... It's got a chance of hitting people below the threshold, right? So it's a bit like Guild Wars 1's Edge of Extinction. I really like the skill in AoE scenarios. If this was like um, a skill 5, the, long the further over to the skill bar you get, the stronger abilities get in Guild Wars 2 generally in the higher cooldown. If this was like a skill 5 mechanic, it could be really profound the way it works. Uh, I will take a Trap Seed again. And I'll plant one down here. I will plant uh, something there. And something there. How I miss your count. That's the last of the seeds. Now we fight on our own. Oh, she interrupted herself there. She said, even in, in dark moments, Evart, you could always lift my spirits. Oh, that's really sweet. Look at this. Look, look, look. There's tons of risen there and tons of risen there. This is so scary. Okay, I'll drop my seeds. And 
We'll try and do as, uh, like there. Did you see how many hits of unholy burst we got there? I'll try and do as much damage before we have to go into shroud as possible here. So let's kill all these guys. Oh my lords. I feel like I'm playing Dynasty Warriors or something. This is crazy. Pull him back. Our auto attack um, doesn't do very much right now because it like get it can only hit one. Oh no no, it does pierce. Never mind. Yeah, our auto attack goes through foes. When the game came out, you had to trait it to let it do that, but now it just does that by default, which is really good actually. So we can take those guys out. Now all of our life force is gone. Go back to our axe. Kill a ton of them. And no no no, we're already up to 600 out of 900 again straight away. There is a cooldown on going in and out, so sometimes that might screw us up. But now we can go back and look. So the more enemies, the better, basically, as a Necro. Um, because you can get so much life force as long as death keeps happening. It's kind of a snowball class in a weird way. Um, not that the game's ever really emphasized that, I'd say. And look at this. We get an abomination. We know how bad and scary these things are. There's an A-bomb right here at the start for the Silvari. Jesus. And he charges through all of our seeds, getting 21 frenzy instantly. We have to dodge. Oh my god, I dodged too early. Oh, we double dodged there. There, I got an evade. Next time he attacks us, I'm going to have to hide in Shroud. It's okay, he switched to one of our seeds. we got to take him out. Alright, hiding in Shroud. Tainted Shackles. We can fear him away with Doom. Oh no, we can't. He's too big to be scared away with Doom. No, 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 no. So he slammed the ground there and we didn't have an evade for it. So he knocked us out of Shroud. I am so relieved. Speak with me, Valiant. And let me help you with Oh my god. <laughs> Zaitan is not messing around when it comes to the Silvari. He does not want these guys here. Not near there. Not near him. It seems like there's a lot of deep antagonism there straight away. Uh yeah, we're not even really dealing with the dragon though. Or oh, we didn't want to be. Gerwin, what's going on? The Green Knight? Hello? Isn't that the threat? Jesus. There. My love can now rest easy, protected from the undead. As for Bersalak, he was always an exceptional fighter, but recently, he's grown invincible. After he slew Evart, my grief compelled me to duel him myself, and I lost. Instead of killing me, he demanded my pledge, insisting that I forget my true love. I could never find joy with a soulless tormentor like Bersalak. I'd sooner die and be laid to rest beside my dearest. Hmm. How do you think Bersalak became so powerful? It's got to be his new armor. There's something different, something magical about it. It was forged by Occam, a smith near Bridget's Overlook. Then I'm off to find Occam. Thank you. It was an honor to fight at your side. I love, by the way, how our hair is actually... Uh, glowing in the night, in the dark. That's so cool. So we get a new uh, weapon. I guess we will pick so we can get focus, dagger, or staff. These are all weapons we've seen on Elementalist. But a necromancer, just as the, the, the axe, will use them totally differently. So let's go with um, a focus. And let's equip that in our offhand. And we'll show off how that works in the next uh, video, I think. Um, but yeah, okay, so Gerwin, what the hell? So basically, she lost the jewel, and he forced her to... Uh, and and it, Because he wants her instead, he killed her boyfriend or whatever. It's really weird the way they talk about their pledge and stuff. You don't really hear Silvari in the contemporary expansion still talking so deeply about that stuff. Like, the idea that the Silvari, all Silvari know what they mean by pledge, and that that side of the Silvari's culture, I feel like it's waned away a little bit over the years. Uh, thank you for your assistance, Valiant. I'm sorry I was short with you. Not a good first impression, I'm sure. I don't think you were short with me at all. What? Uh, you have every right to be suspicious. Burslak is plaguing you. She says he's a cruel beast. He's taken away my love, and now he wants to take away my freedom. Hi. I know you're suffering, but I do want to ask you something else. She says, I owe you that much and more. Ask away. Can you tell me about your lost love? Evart was generous and brave. He was full of life. We were going to travel the world until Burslak came along. How did he get involved? Well, he courted me, but I said it will never be. In his jealousy, he cut down my dear Evart like a winter firewood. There's so much love involved in this uh, opening story here. A tragedy. May I ask another question? Um, tell me more about Berslak himself. So he's of noon, just like us guys. <gasps> Uh, he's of the cycle of noon, but he's been training with those scoundrels of the Nightmare Court. The Nightmare Court? Wicked and vile Silvari, who reject the teachings of Ventari's tablets. 
Hmm. Uh, they sound like evil folk. So remember what I talked about uh, in the dream, guys. What if the Silvari had never been under the influence of the tablet? Uh, do you wonder what they'd be like? Well, maybe the Nightmare Court do as well. Uh, she says, thanks for your assistance, Valiant. Okay, that's fine. And then the last question... Uh, those seed plants were marvelous. Firstborn Kahedans created these wonders to help our wardens fight the Risen. Are you a warden, we ask? She says, no, I did want to join. I trained with the wardens before all of this. So she trained with the wardens, then she wanted to uh, travel the world. That's really interesting. Um, some of the icons for the dialogue here is weird. There seems to be another question here as well. No, I think that's, uh, that's about it. That's everything. So there you go, that's Gerwin. Um, and it seems then, so the, the revelation here is number one, that Zaitan is pissed. And number two, that uh, Burslak got his armor from a renowned Silvari smith named Occam. And it's Occam, really, and meeting Occam that defined why I wanted to do this story above all others. It's raining, it's miserable, it's pretty pretty grim and sad immediately here for our necromancer on the tarnished coast. But I guess uh, Cauliflower will have to see what lies across the horizon. Thanks very much for watching, guys. We'll be back very shortly with the rest of the story next time. some of his war stories. You should go ask him. Why don't huh? you? You first. Excuse me, kind sir. I wonder if we could trouble you. Too late. What do you want? We were wondering, have you been in a war? Every day is war. What's it like? I imagine the sparkling armor and lines of soldiers marching into battle. The stamping of boots and the voices raised in glory. The wading through gore, the blood that stains your claws, the sweat burning your eyes, the smell of bodies, the death. Yeah, it's fun. Um, thanks. <laughs>